Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. I have to say, I've really been enjoying making these videos lately. Smartphones have been getting very exciting, whether it's the competition in the lower end budget market or in the higher end with all of these new form factors such as foldables, you have a flip form factor. You've seen a lot of videos lately from me on Samsung Z Fold 2, but now it's time to take a look and see what Microsoft has to offer, yes. Microsoft now has a phone. It does run Android. It is called the Surface Duo. The Duo's display doesn't fold. It's actually two displays side by side held together with a hinge that rotates 360 degrees. So you can have two displays back and front or of course fold it completely shut. And when it is shut, there is no front display. So I'm really curious to see not only the hardware of the Surface Duo, but of course the software implementation, how Microsoft took Android and what they did to complement those dual screens. So I wanna go ahead and do an unboxing, show you what you get inside the box, and then of course take a close look at the phone. Let's get started. Fairly minimal box, just a picture of the device and some Microsoft Surface Duo branding around. Now keep in mind, the base model at 128 gigs is $1,400. Yes, this is a $1,400 device. Here it is right here, let's take it out. I'm going to set it to the side for now, blend it in with the front of the box, and let's take a look what else comes inside. Nice addition, Surface Duo bumper. Looks like it will come with a bumper case for our Surface Duo. We'll open that up in just a second and actually throw it on the phone. You've got your standard booklets and SIM ejection tool. Very rectangular power adapter, USB Type-C. It charges at 18 watts. And really nice that Microsoft has included one that has retractable prongs. Super convenient when you are traveling and carrying this with you. Finally, you have your USB Type-C to USB Type-C charging cable. It also seems like it is longer than the usual cable that's included with phones. I'll make an annotation how long it is. Opening the Surface Duo bumper, again, super nice that they included something like this to protect a device that's worth $1,400. So good to see from Microsoft taking it out. Ooh, it's got a nice soft touch feel and you'll notice it just attaches on both sides via that image. Make sure to peel these off. Let's do that real quick. And peeling the second one off. This is actually adhesive on the inside to help it stay on. So we'll attach this towards the end of the video simply because I wanna take a look at the actual hardware of the phone. But you'll notice with the case on this side is where your buttons are going to all be covered, including that SIM tray, but a slot here for the power button because it does act as a fingerprint scanner. Now, on to what you came to see, the Microsoft Surface Duo. Let's peel this plastic on off. And we actually have to open it up and peel it all the way through. And there we have it. Uh, initial impressions of that hinge because it made me open it right away. It feels very sturdy. It can hold at different angles. It doesn't feel like it's going to wobble at all. Again, this is just very initial impressions, but it does go all the way around. So the hinge feels very premium as it should. Again, it's not a folding display. Uh, so the hinge mechanism just, just feels like it should, especially when they uh, make some Surface laptops too. I'm sure they got the hinge engineering down. This is a really sleek looking phone. I like the subtle reflectiveness that the white has. I don't think a lot of fingerprints are actually going to show up on the outside of this device. And then on the front is the Windows logo, a little bit more reflective overall. I'm also noticing it's a fairly light and thin device when closed. I think when you open it up, it's going to be pretty crazy how thin this actually is. Just about as thick as the USB-C slot, just a little bit thicker than that. Just a heads up, this is a solo fingerprint scanner. The power button is right above it. So we're going to turn on the Surface Duo for the first time. And while it boots up, let's take a close look at the phone. Down at the bottom, all you have is that USB-C slot for charging. Moving along on the right side, is where that SIM card slot is, moving up, fingerprint scanner, then your power button and volume rockers. And I notice these buttons uh, have a decent amount of feedback to them, they're fairly clicky. And a close look at the back hinge, I wanna show you that mechanism too. So opening it up, here is a look at it, and folding it all the way back, clasp shut. It has a nice soft sound and feel when you actually hit the backs together, and then when you flip it all the way forward, very similar sound and feel. Just again, just overall premium feeling. Opening up the phone, you have your two displays side by side 
in the upper right hand corner is where that single camera is with your LED flash. This is an 11 megapixel camera. Your earpiece is next to it. Now I'm going to run through the startup process and just talk about anything that's noteworthy. It is kind of cool how they have an intro animation on one screen while you do something on the right display. All right, looks like right out the gate, we need to install an update. I'll be right back. After setting up a pin, we can scan our fingerprint on the right side. Just set whatever finger it is you'd like down. I foresee only needing my thumb. I actually don't know if I'll ever, maybe my pointer finger, I'm not sure. I'll have to uh, test that out a little bit later on. I'll let you guys know. You can add another if you'd like to. I'm not going to for the time being. We are now on the home screen of the Surface Duo from Microsoft. It does have some pages with a bunch of app icons. If you go all the way left, it looks like it has a page for events, tasks. I'm sure you can customize all of these things. I did really like that animation of those icons throwing over to the side. Kind of neat, if we swipe up, we can go to all of our apps again, throwing all of our home icons over to the other screen. Can you swipe up? Okay, so whatever one you swipe up on, it acts upon that specific side. So it's essentially like having two phones in a sense. Now let's say we wanted to open up an app. It opens it up on one side, leaving the entire screen over here to use. Now let's say we wanted to open up an app on both screens. Opening up uh, Edge, which is the browser that is included, we can go home. Now if we swipe up and pause, it will bring us to our recent apps where we can see all of them. You can swipe them away. But if I'm in an app and I wanted to throw it over to the other screen, swipe up and just bring it over. And there, yes, there is a bit of a gap, but it is fairly easy to just continuously keep your finger going when you have the duo open. I can drop it down and it brings it over to this side. Now, if you wanted to bring it over on both screens, just pause a little bit in the middle, let go, and it will open it up across both displays. You can rotate the screen and it will be across both displays up and down depending on how you want to use the phone. Now keep in mind the gesture area is on the right side here when you are in this orientation. So if you swipe up it will go all the way home. Swipe up and pause will get you to those recent apps like so. We can go back into the messaging app or you can have two apps open at once. We got messaging down here. We've got our browser up towards the top. So that is essentially one of the biggest use cases for having dual displays. And here's a close look at the two displays. Again, two displays side by side. Both of them are AMOLED. And when you look at just one of them, this is actually a 5.6 inch 1800 by 1350 display. And then when you combine the two displays diagonally, it's actually 8.1 inches, 2700 by 1800. Also worth mentioning, when it is fully opened, it is a 3-2 aspect ratio, whereas if you just have one of the displays open, it's a 4-3 aspect ratio. Like most foldables, opening with one hand is very difficult. However, I noticed Microsoft added a little feature. If you peek inside, it lets you know the time and date at a quick glance, so that's kind of cool. And then if you just open it up while it's locked, it will bring you to the lock screen, show you some notifications. You have a quick shortcut to the camera. You also have a flashlight shortcut button to use that LED flash as a shortcut. Now, if we go ahead and just set our thumb down on that fingerprint scanner, it will unlock our device. Now, closing it will automatically lock it. Closing the phone, let's test out that fingerprint scanner. If I set my thumb down and open it up, it doesn't look like it unlocks the device. I kind of wish if I had my thumb resting on the scanner, it would activate the fingerprint scanner and unlock it. So that way when it's opened, it's already unlocked. I have to actually lift up my thumb and set it back down to unlock the phone. And yes, this does run Android. So you can pull down from the top to get to your notifications, get to some quick panel shortcuts. You can do that on either side, depending on which screen you would like to use. And you'll notice a lot of quick panel shortcuts. There's a link to Windows shortcut, of course, with it being Microsoft. Let's dive into the settings app. Let's move it over to the right side. Jumping into display settings, it looks like the dark theme was set by default. Uh, you can turn it on and off. It does not look like you can schedule it. Uh, that will come in Android 11. Let's go into the camera app and it looks like it opens up on one side. Obviously with the single camera lens being right up there, I am now taking a selfie. Let's snap a quick picture, maybe take another one. The shutter speed is fairly inconsistent after tapping that button. Once it gets that focus down, I think it will uh, go ahead and speed up. But you see how long that one actually took. That was uh, a little interesting. Now, what happens if I bring this to the middle? 
boom, it brings up a gallery of all of the pictures that you have taken. Kind of a nice feature. I really like being able to preview those images that I've taken right away. And let's snap another picture and it shows up just about right away on the left side. Now, if I flip this all the way over, it will go ahead and activate uh, the camera just being on one side and it recognizes it. And on this side, the screen will be off because it knows that you are using it in a certain orientation and you can just use it as a rear camera. I, I don't know what's going on, but these uh, the shutter button and the shutter speed is not in sync. You'll notice the delay when pressing the button. There's a group of different modes, slow-mo, video, photo. You have a portrait mode and panorama. Now, when we dive into some camera settings, you can actually change the video size. You can shoot all the way in 4K 60, nice to see. Now let's say we put it in a sort of tent mode. On one side is the screen and this is double tap to switch screens. So I think it has one on and it says double tap to switch. Um, does not seem to be working for some reason. I'll have to look more into that. Another mode you can use, let's say we wanted to type something. If we are on one screen, it will bring up that keyboard for one-handed use. However, you can kind of put it in a laptop mode if you hold it a certain way, and it will be like a laptop where the keyboard's all down towards the bottom. You have your stickers, your, your input method, your suggested words down at the bottom. You can just go ahead and type, and then up at the top is where that input is in a full screen. You also can pair apps up. So if I press and hold on one of them, I can add a group. So if I wanted to add another app, you can go through and choose whichever one. Let's just use messages for now. I'm gonna hit done and there is our new app group. And all you have to do is tap on it and look at that. They both open at the exact same time. Uh, we could go ahead and swipe up to go home and swipe up and no animation there. Let's do it again. Swipe up, didn't do anything there. It seems to be struggling a little bit with the app pairing. I just tapped on the messaging app. It didn't open up. Uh, so a couple struggles with the software right out the gate. I hope a reboot might actually smooth those out. I'll talk about this uh, in an upcoming video. And no, I didn't forget about it. Let's add the bumper case. I really do want to protect this phone as much as I possibly can. So setting it along the right side. There is an adhesive in it. So just kind of make sure. Whoa. Okay, don't do that. Just be very careful when you're applying it, but that actually did apply it very well. I can just go ahead and press the power button and the volume rockers work very well. So it does seem to be very securely fit on the one side. And finally, same thing. Just line it on up with the side and just kind of make sure it is pressed up against the side and you're good to go. Of course, make sure you don't drop it. And that is it for the bumper case. Uh, bringing it along, it does raise up. So if you do ac actually set it down, it's sitting on one side on the bumper case and then on the hinge on the other side. Pretty clean looking. It's kind of hard to tell that there is even a bumper case on there. It almost feels like it's part of the design. Uh, we'll add some grip around the sides too because it uh, has a nice grippy feel to it. Uh, let's go ahead and try out that fingerprint scanner. So if I set my thumb down, it's still fairly easy to reach with the gap there. And like I said, the buttons are very easy to press. One final thing I'd like to try, if I fully close the phone, obviously on this side, it says that you could double tap to switch screens and it doesn't seem to be working for whatever reason. I'll have to go into it and see why, but you can use it like a normal phone when you have it flipped all the way. However, it is fairly wide. So reaching some sides with one hand might be a little difficult, but it is an option if you want to do something quickly. You don't need it opened all of the way. You can just flip it all the way back to use it like a normal phone. So that's everything I want to talk about for now with the Surface Duo. I'll be making a lot more follow-up videos very soon, so be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified when those go live. I hope you've been enjoying the videos lately. Like I said, I've been enjoying making them. Uh, be sure to click that thumbs up button. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.